Dear colleagues, dear friends, dear guests, you are warmly welcome to the panel entitled Cultural Heritage and Science, Perspectives in Law and Policy. It is an honor for us to be part of ESOF 2020, and I immediately want to thank both the ESOF organizers and the University of Trieste for helping us setting up this panel and for hosting us here in this unique location. This event stems from two main sources to which I wish now to pay tribute to. On the one hand, as far as research patterns are concerned, the pluriannual work carried out by the members of the Chair of Comparative Law at the Department Youth Lead of the University of Trieste, Professor Marta Infantino, Dr. Paola Monaco, myself, and all under the lead of Professor Mauro Bussani. On the other hand, the pluriannual work carried out by a group of young scholars coming from different corners of Europe, all working under the lead of a brilliant international lawyer who luckily happens also to be the moderator of this event. I'm introducing to you Dr. Andrzej Jakubowski from the Polish Academy of Sciences in Warsaw and from the University of Opole, Poland. Thank you, Andrzej, for joining us today, also physically, which is really important. But I wish also to introduce and thank the other speakers of this event who are now connected remotely. Dr. Alicia Jagelska burduk holder of the UNESCO Chair of Comparative Law and uh, Cultural Property Law at the University of Opole, Poland. Ivana Kunda, Professor of European and International Law at the University of Rijeka, Croatia. And Slobodan Midorovic, PhD student and teaching assistant in civil and property law at the University of Novi Sad, Serbia. Thank you to all of you for being today our remote speakers and for putting your effort for the success of this panel. Well, I will now briefly introduce our topic. Based on the premise that culture is a wide notion capable of being defined by a variety of sources, our idea today is to debate on meanings and function that the notion of culture has acquired and is currently acquired, acquiring in the legal domain, particularly at the level of the EU and uh, particularly with the focus on the area of Central Eastern Europe and the Western Balkan countries. The ways in which the law defines and uses culture are various, 
ranging from the functional use as a means to reach social control objectives uh, to the shaping of a legal regime to protect cultural assets and practices per se. As the speeches in this panel will show, among the contents that the legal meaning of culture is currently acquiring, that of cultural heritage is playing a major role. And coupled with the concept of cultural diversity is gaining even more importance in the last years at the level of the EU policy. We will show in this panel that this is happening mainly with the aim of using cultural heritage as a tool to reach political objectives, both in the internal and in this external dimension of the EU. Furthermore, in recent times, this functional use of culture by the EU institutions has been linked with the focus on science. Science intended as a means to develop collaborative researches and efforts in studying how cultural heritage can be better protected also in connection with the use of new technology as applied to cultural heritage, digitization, recourse to virtual reality, geometrics, space technology, and many others. This builds on the acknowledgement that science, conducted in a multilateral, collaborative manner, has the potential to overcome cultural differences by experimenting, by achieving results, and by making their pub them public thereby attracting the interests of different classes of people across the societies. Typically, cultural heritage has been defined by a variety of international law instruments. Let's think to the UNESCO conventions, there are several. And it has been defined as a common good, that is, an asset belonging to and shared by all mankind, independently from its location. Well, this shared and global character of cultural heritage makes it an ideal vector to address global issues in law and policy. Therefore, besides uh, cultural diplomacy, the EU has widely developed a science diplomacy, both focused on cultural heritage issues and both entrusted with the task of addressing in a soft, mediated way issues that cannot easily be solved directly at political level. Our moderator, Dr. Jakubowski, will soon have the floor and develop these premises, illustrating the research so far conducted under his lead and showing how the contribution of science to cultural heritage can be a powerful tool to build peaceful relationships at the international level of the European Union. Thank you, Andre. The floor is yours. Can I? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Fiorentini. Thank you very much, Francesca, for for this uh, for this introduction. I'm I'm very I'm I'm very honoured to be here. Um, I'm very thankful to the University of Trieste and to, to the organisers for the invitation. And just briefly, then, that this uh, this panel um, stems from. Uh, in large part from the research we already conducted within, within uh, cooperation with University of Trieste, uh, Polish Academy of Sciences, um, also University of Fine Arts uh, in Poznan and British um, Institute for International and Comparative Law. So, so this was a, com this was a, a, a big uh, collaborative project. Um, within the framework of the, of the joint programming um, uh, call uh, name uh, uh, Culture, Heritage and Global Change by, uh, by the European Commission with cooperation uh, with different uh, member states. So in our case, there were three states, so Italy, Poland and United Kingdom. And our, our major goal was to, was to really uh, reconstruct and understand what is the, the nature of heritage uh, regulation, legislation, in practice within the EU law and policy, because this is not not so so straightforward, especially because the competences of the Union are very limited in this regard. Uh, so, so very much, uh, very much is based on a on a, on a wide uh, so-called governance governance uh, governance concept uh, in this uh, in this uh, uh, in this. Um, mm, 
in this specific area is understood at the multi-level of co cooperation between different different uh, agencies, different different uh, different regulators, different law enforcement agencies, and different stakeholders. So, also looking at the structure of this of this team, um, we also tried to to look at the certain. Um, neighborhood policies of the European Union, looking especially at, at the Western Balkans. Uh, so the team of uh, of, the, of Trieste under under the lead of Professor uh, Fiorenti, uh, Fiorentini, and and uh, in our in Polish case, this was German and Ukraine. So so the so many many issues related to the to the difficult past also in this in this past uh, in this part of the uh, of. Um, of the globe, this part of, uh, of Europe, and in case of United Kingdom, also looking at the, at the issue of colonial context. So the major outcome of this, uh, of this, of this project was, uh, uh, was a book, was a edited volume, uh, dealing with, with this critical approach to, to, to law and policy. Um, and and many um, and our our speakers of today were in this. Um, to the, to various extent were were involved in this in this uh, in this in this final outcome of the project and 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 before and and just just one thing also how this how this project on on uh, on law and policy and how and cultural heritage within uh, the european union dealt with the issue of heritage and science obviously obviously uh, the issue uh, the issue is uh, is again is not straightforward, and we I think we uh, identify different areas in which in which we in which these two two, uh, two sectors uh, uh, intermingle. So obviously um, the conserv the conservation science. So there is much uh, this, there are many projects. There are many projects funded by the EU. There are many collaborative. Uh, um, events and and uh, scientific endeavors related to, to to conservation, also in the areas very 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 complicated as underwater heritage, uh, um, also looking at the Adriatic uh, Adriatic Sea, a very important very important uh, conference 2018 on within the European Year of Cultural Heritage on the underwater heritage in in this part of um, Europe. Also, the issue from 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 legal perspective, how to combine how to combine legal science with heritage, which is again uh, not 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 easy task, especially concerning national differences uh, between different member states. Also, the issue of new technologies, uh, which which we try to look from 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 the from the perspective of digitization. Uh, arts and humanities, so the, so the freedom of art, freedom of artistic freedom, and also statistics and econometrics, so, so the issue of, of, uh, of cultural indicators related, related to, to, uh, to, um, to cultural development, and obviously social sciences, so the participation in cultural heritage. Uh, governance and management. So, uh, so, uh, so now, uh, so now, I, I think that these, these different, these different topics, different areas of, of intersections between heritage and and science will be will be addressed in um, in our panel. And I would like to, to now to invite uh, again uh, Professor Fiorentini, Associate Professor of Comparative Law at the University of Trieste, uh, also the leader of Italian team of of our project. Uh, I didn't mention the name of the project, Project Hewright, Project Hewright, so cultural heritage in the European Union. Uh, and uh, Francesca uh, also served as research associate at the Max Planck in uh, Institute for Comparative and International Private Law and Marie Curie Fellow at the, uh, at, um, the Center of European Legal Politics in Bremen. And I've got the pleasure also to cooperate with you, Francesca, in a new project on the Comparative Law Dictionary of Cultural Heritage Law. So, so the, floor is, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andre, for this nice presentation. OK, I think it's, everything is all right, and we can start. So this speech has an introductory aim to the panel and to the topic of the, our other speakers, uh, which will be focused more on different countries of the uh, analyzed area, Central Eastern Europe and the Western Balkans. Well, referring to cultural heritage is not a new exercise in the European integration process. 
since the 1957 Treaty of Rome, when the EEC competences did not involve culture at all, the institutions had to face the challenge of forging a sense of belonging of the European citizens towards the European project. They put efforts in building a concept of collective European identity to be added to and not to be opposed to the sense of loyalty and belonging to the different national identities. This path has been followed by making recourse to a common or sometimes shared or sometimes European concept of heritage. A concept, a concept which has never been too well defined actually, probably because a precise definition wasn't needed after all and we will see soon why. From this practice, a cultural diplomacy and even a cultural heritage diplomacy have arisen operating in two directions. Internally, within the Union, to underpin the European project, especially in times of crisis, and externally towards the rest of the world, to positioning the EU globally as a global actor. Behind these early efforts lies the work of science, developing a clear understanding of the role of narratives about culture. Okay, there is. Scholars showed to politics that cultural narratives are part of a cognitive and emotional battle to develop Europe as an image community. Broad as it is, the concept of cultural heritage has been the ideal vector of a non-existent reality which had to be imagined first, imagined by science, before its creation could be possible through the secular arm of the law. What is rather new today is the plenty of measures put in place by the European Union in the cultural heritage sector as a means to manage international relations, also with the Western Balkan countries, specifying that under this label, the EU puts now Albania, Bosnia and Herzegovina, North Macedonia, Kosovo, Montenegro and Serbia. Yet it must be stressed that the prominent role cultural heritage is playing today for the EU international relations is the result of decades of changes. To regain a lost centrality on the global arena after the alteration of the geopolitical balances caused by globalization, the EU had to proceed towards ever more ambitious enlargement programs opening up also to new techniques of, of governance of international relations. And to make this possible, changes had to occur at two levels, the level of the European law and the level of the European policy. Let's see now these two levels. The European law side, the 1992 Master Treaty for the first time conferred on the EU some competences related to culture. Before Maastricht, culture was a matter completely reserved to member states, and after Maastricht, the Union enjoys complementary competences in culture. These competences, as a rule, do not reach so far as to confer legislative powers with binding effect for the member states, as a rule, but they do authorize the, member state, uh, the Union to adopt measures supporting the action by the member states. On this technical basis, the EU had the power to launch, since 1997, a series of multi-annual financing programs and cooperation initiatives focusing on culture and cultural heritage. The current program running now is Creative Europe for the years 2014-2020, and it focuses on the potential of culture and cultural heritage for the economic growth in Europe and is open to participation to candidate countries, potential candidate countries, and accessing countries. A new program is now under preparation for the period 2021-27 with an increased budget of 17%. Up to 1,642 million euros are planned significantly with a focus not only on economy but also on the so-called external action of the EU, that is its international relations. If we then consider that the EU also cooperates at international level with the Council of Europe, another independent organization safeguarding human rights on the European continent. We can tell that through this joint action, EU and Council of Europe, since 2003, an amount equal to 
2.410.000 euro has been spent for the countries of Central Eastern Europe and the Western Balkans. Let's now shift to the European policy side. Well, culture and cultural heritage officially entered the EU's international relations through a dense policy-making activity, followed, following a precise strategy of using culture and cultural heritage functionally as icons and as symbols of the EU values, with the aim of catalyzing the public consent which was needed to underpin the EU project and the EU enlargement project, much more than to safeguard and better protect cultural heritage per se, assets and practices per se. Then a plethora of policy documents has been issued starting from the 2007 European Agenda for Culture, but then uh, these documents have intensified, especially in the period 2018 and 19, so very recently, not by chance. As it is usual in the EU lawmaking activity, these last policy documents relied on a statistical survey by the EU dating 2017, which stated a series of interesting data. For instance, 53% of the EU citizens think that member states share common values, whereas 40% think that the EU people are profoundly divided. Moreover, one third of the EU citizen does not take part to any cultural activity whatsoever. Well, believing that culture is the better vehicle to overcome such divisions and gaps, the institutions put on the agenda the strategy to potentiate culture horizontally in all the EU policies and particularly also in the international relations. In these documents, we see that culture is a notion that undergoes a widening process. It includes, among others, cultural heritage, arts, and science. Well then, if the EU cultural policy refers to science, it is now the time to look, and it is interesting to look, if also the EU competences on science maybe do refer to, to cross-refer to cultural heritage or not. Let's see now this aspect. Well, concerning science, the treaty on the functioning of the uh, European Union regulates also competences for the EU, supporting those of the member states, also in the field of science, that is research and technological development. On this legal basis, since 1983, the EC, the European Community, adopts multi-annual framework programs to finance science, the current one being, as we all know, Horizon 2020 for the years 2014-2020. And then since 2009, the Lisbon Treaty expressly mandates the EU to also draw up a policy specifically on science, a policy on the so-called European science for research and technological development. So far, this policy has invested specifically in cultural heritage research within Horizon 2020, over 300 million euro for the period 2014-17, 473 projects financed. And in the period 2018 to 2020, which is still ongoing, up to 260 million euro are estimated. Western Balkans also participate and are currently financed under this program. Well, we have to add that the EU policy connecting cultural heritage with science sets up at least two directions for future action. The first one is reinforcing innovation, knowledge and research in the sector, and the second is using cultural heritage to potentiate international cooperation. The first direction clearly points to the need to use new technology in research pertaining to cultural heritage, 3D scanning, virtual reality, digitization, space technology, all as means to improve asset preservation, but also something more, as means to increase social inclusion and participation, citizens' particip participation in cultural heritage governance, which is again a political objective, has nothing to do with asset preservation per se. And now the second direction, it establishes geographical zones in which cultural heritage is to be potentiated, to be potentiated as a means to foster international relations and not by chance, the Western Balkans country, Western Balkan countries are one of these target zones. 
To complete the picture on the EU policy, I have then to add that beside a cultural policy and beside a policy for science, the EU also develops, of course, a policy for the Western Balkan countries, a specific one. The relevant documents here confirm the centrality of cultural heritage and culture. They declare that EU policy on culture and education is part of the acquis that the candidate countries have to implement in order to join the EU. And also the doubling of the Erasmus Plus program, the doubling of the funding of this program, very central in the European education, is mandated. And now I conclude uh, by pointing to two uh, concrete examples of uh, how the EU is using in, particularly, in particular art and science uh, in order to create tangible symbols, symbols anticipating ideally something which politically is only in progress, that is the bridge between the EU and the Western Balkans. The first image I, I, I have produced here for you has to do with a technological project combining new technologies and cultural heritage. Within Horizon 2020, there is the project Six Seam, which is currently under, under uh, is ongoing, is, is under financing now. It aims at creating a unique virtual research environment in Southeast Europe and in the Eastern Mediterranean with a special focus on life sciences, climatology, and digital cultural heritage. With the exception of Kosovo, all the Western Balkan countries participate in this project and account together 20% of the overall project budget. Six Sims creates an electronic platform containing common data repositories and softwares, algorithms for remote sensing image classification, and other systems for automatic object recognition and many other technical devices and instruments. But what does this project concretely offer to science and to society? It will enable, for instance, automatic cataloging of cultural assets, cutting off manual labor in that, in that sphere. Or it will make possible simulations of environmental influence on historical buildings, on monuments and sites. And now let's go to art to see how the EU is using politically art. In April 2019, a new mural of street art has been inaugurated in Brussels in the very center of the city, dedicated to the people of the EU and the people of the Western Balkans. The artist is a guy from Bosnia-Herzegovina, Druskic, and the title of this artwork is It is only with the heart that one can see well, which is a famous quotation by the famous novel The Little Prince, and clearly points uh, to, uh, to an invitation. It's an invitation to look at each other with an open heart. And following up this initiative, this year the EU funded uh, the Montenegrin project called EU for Me. And again, here three murals have been created in three different cities in Montenegro on the theme Me for Europe and Europe for Me, where Me stands as acronym for Montenegro. I thank you very much for your attention, and I have concluded. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Francesca, for, for this, for this um, uh, very interesting and rich introduction to, to, um, to this topic of, uh, of the panel. And now I would like to invite the next speaker, uh, Dr. Alicia jagielska borduk uh, from University of Pole, where uh, she holds a chair in the culture and property law. Uh, Alicia is also editor-in-chief uh, in of, uh, of Scopus Index Journal Standard and Culture Law Review. And Alicia um, serves as a mediator at the UNESCO Committee on Return Restitution of Cultural Property and uh, an arbiter in the Cultural Property Court in, uh, of Arbitration in The Hague. Uh, and Alicia, in our project, she also, uh, also pro um, prepared a chapter on um, education research and uh, the role of, herit of cultural heritage in the, uh, in the EU uh, policy. So, Alicia, the floor is yours. Uh, okay, uh, many thanks for the introduction. Uh, first, uh, I, will, uh, I would like to congratulate uh, all organizers for this uh, beautiful, fantastic uh, initiative, uh, even though we are 
uh, challenged by COVID uh, and all uh, restrictions, it's uh, it's great to uh, to join you uh, online. Um, I believe that uh, this initiative uh, just confirms how uh, cultural heritage is important for uh, EU and uh, partner countries' uh, development. Um, <clears throat> one moment. Uh, supporting uh, cultural initiatives is uh, mentioned in joint communication to the European Parliament and Council towards an EU strategy for international cultural relations from 2016. Already it was mentioned by uh, Professor, uh, Professor Fiorentini. Uh, what uh, should be emphasized here? Culture is uh, perceived as a development catalyst as uh, Mm, vehicle that as a, as a tool to uh, create new uh, new uh, workplaces, uh, countries' development, integration, and uh, intercultural uh, dialogue. Uh, <clears throat> uh, in the communication, uh, the recent communication, uh, 2018, uh, on credible uh, enlargement perspective uh, for an enhanced engagement uh, with the Western uh, Balkans. The role of education uh, was uh, mentioned. Uh, in addition to uh, the increasing funding under Erasmus, uh, already doubled, uh, um, the, uh, uh, the idea that the, uh, the activity to foster the cultural links with uh, the region uh, were uh, additionally, additionally uh, uh, underlined. Now, after uh, uh, or uh, actually with pending uh, COVID spread, uh, we have to pay attention to new um, to new uh, EU initiatives. For example, uh, a new action uh, called uh, Flip for CCICs, Action Finance, Learning, Innovation, and Patenting for Cultural uh, and Creative Industries. Uh, even in the uh, in the uh, communication, cultural uh, creative uh, industries uh, were mentioned. They play additional uh, pivotal role in uh, supporting uh, not only creativity but also cultural uh, diversity. Uh, the geographical scope of the mentioned uh, new uh, call for proposals uh, is very broad and also includes. Uh, not only EU countries, but neighboring, uh, neighboring countries uh, with uh, Western uh, Balkans uh, as well. <clears throat> uh, from uh, 2020 uh, to from, uh, 2012, so the EU Commission organizes meetings uh, of the Western Balkan platform on education and training. This is the uh, this is another uh, area of cooperation when it comes to science and higher education. Uh, one uh, of the most famous uh, famous programs is uh, Erasmus Plus, with, uh, in which we uh, have Erasmus Mobility, Erasmus Mundus uh, Joint Master Degree Scholarships, and Jean Monnet in terms of uh, EU integration, uh, Jean Monnet chairs and their, uh, their uh, um, activities are uh, crucial. Uh, uh, for example, uh, there is one uh, uh, Jean Monnet chair uh, in uh, uh, Tirana. Uh, when it comes to uh, Erasmus mobility, now uh, suspended or a little bit frozen due to the, due to the situation, it uh, enables uh, young people, but also staff and academic teachers to exchange, to create networking that uh, can be perceived as a base, as a starting uh, point for uh, projects like Hugh Rights uh, today uh, presented uh, to, the, uh, to the audience. Um, apart from uh, exchange, uh, uh, EU uh, integration uh, course, uh, course on EU integration, EU, uh, uh, EU matters. Uh, the very important, uh, a very important thing uh, uh, is uh, uh, cooperation between universities and research centers. Such a project uh, <coughs> uh, was uh, uh, was. Uh, 
conducted and uh, it was uh, the aim was to support capacity building for technology transfer in the western balkans uh, ideally uh, all goals are based on exchanging best practices but also exchanging uh, knowledge and uh, when it comes to establishing new technology parks and uh, in queue uh, uh, papers. Um, for me, very interesting part of uh, projects uh, devoted to Western Balkans uh, are projects within Interreg B, which supports uh, transnational cooperation. Three of uh, its programs cover uh, partially the Western Balkans, Adrian, uh, Danube and Balkan Mediterranean. Uh, when it comes to Adrian, it's a program that invests in regional innovation systems, cultural and natural uh, heritage, environmental resilience, and sustainable uh, transport. Uh, the, uh, the second one, Balkan Med, uh, is a new cooperation program deriving from, uh, <clears throat> deriving from the will of uh, uh, countries uh, to promote cooperation uh, after the project Southeast uh, Europe 2017-2013. Uh, uh, here I mentioned IRC uh, Hermes project. Uh, this is the project uh, um, based on creating a new uh, cultural heritage uh, management uh, system. The system will operate as a unified platform for all countries, uh, referring to most important her uh, historic buildings in both local and uh, English uh, languages. It will be accessible uh, public. Uh, when it comes to uh, culture, it's not only immovable cultural heritage, but we have to pay attention to cultural property. Um, what's worth mentioning is a new uh, initiative implemented uh, um, together uh, by the EU and UNESCO, a project uh, with uh, uh, a project based uh, on uh, cultural uh, property uh, protection uh, initiatives and uh, uh, fight against the illicit uh, traffic. The aim of the project is uh, to uh, cooperate with authorities, individual officials uh, from the ministries of culture uh, museums in order to make the art market uh, more uh, transparent. Uh, it was uh, it, ha it has been recently uh, launched. Uh, in my, uh, uh, I was asked to uh, to refer to our university's experience in terms of uh, culture and uh, EU uh, 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 EU uh, projects. Uh, we not only have uh, experience uh, uh, in Erasmus projects, mobility exchanges, uh, but uh, also uh, we are now part of the FORSCAM uh, um, project. It's fostering outreach uh, within European regional uh, transnational, <coughs> sorry, higher education and uh, mobility. Uh, what is uh, uh, what is interesting in this project is the fact that the universities cooperating, they are not based in capital cities, but only one of them. Uh, it's the strength, not, uh, uh, not, uh, uh, not the problem, it's the strength of the network and uh, uh, the new uh, laboratories, uh, exchanges, uh, trainings uh, subsidized by the uh, European Union uh, are uh, forcing uh, in the project. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Alicia, for for for, for this uh, for this talk. And now, uh, now I would like to to invite uh, Professor Ivana Kunda, uh, head of the International and European Private Law Department at the Faculty of University of Rijeka, and Vice Dean for Science of this of this um, of this faculty. Uh, she's also deputy president of the Croatian Cooperative Law Association, and she was a, F a Fulbright fellow at the Columbia University and fellow at two Max Planck Institutes for Innovation, Competition, and for Comparative and International Private Law. And Ivana served as national contributor to the uh, Herite project. So, Ivana, the floor, the floor is yours. Thank you very much uh, to, to you, uh, Andre, uh, and I would like to say. Uh, hello to everyone. I'm truly delighted uh, to greet you all 
from Rijeka, which is the European Capital of Culture 2020. So I find that a, a very important uh, information in this context, in the context of this uh, uh, of this panel. Uh, but besides that, I think um, I might draw attention also to the fact that Croatia was uh, uh, at the uh, it was the Croatian presidency over EU for the first half of the 2020, and um, there we can um, see what has um, actually happened. So I thought that um, uh, within the context of this uh, presentation, I will try to address the most recent developments, which are uh, inevitably now also related to the crisis management also in the cultural sector, in particular uh, the, the area of cultural heritage, and try to connect that also to the scientific contribution that can be made uh, in, 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 the, in the situation such as we are in. Uh, so, um, um, as Andres said, cultural diplomacy is very important in these areas. And uh, actually, uh, during the Croatian presidency, uh, two uh, very important meetings were hosted by Croatia, which were online due to the circumstances, uh, one in uh, April and the other one in May. And the April, uh, April meeting actually uh, turned out to be very important because the member states realized what kind of problems they are facing in the overall cultural sector, but also the sector of uh, cultural heritage. They tried to map the situation country by country and uh, overall, and the result was this uh, report of 150 pages in which every member state indicated uh, how they uh, tried to cope with the crisis, what measures they implemented in the cultural sector, and some of them I tried to research through these pages, also mentioned specifically cultural heritage. Uh, that does not mean, however, that other countries or member states haven't addressed cultural heritage. It's just that in this report it was not in specifically mentioned. I'll just Try, try to go um, very briefly by mentioning a couple of them, such as examples and examples of the measures that they put in place. I thought that that could be an, an interesting um, point of reference for this discussion. For example, in Belgium, the, the measures included uh, extension of time for uh, um, uh, protective measures, uh, preventive measures and so on, uh, certain subsidies, um, just as in Czech Republic, also subsidies from the state were awarded to different institutions. Uh, Estonia as well tried to use the uh, promotion of the mu uh, museums and other cultural heritage uh, sites uh, in a view of touristic promotion. Uh, the same idea was also born in mind by Lithuania uh, and some other countries uh, such as uh, Romania. Uh, Ireland, for example, used uh, these options to uh, tackle, to, to reach to people more over digital platforms. They allocated funds for these purposes. Uh, so we see that actually member states have uh, innovative ways to address the problem uh, and uh, I think that that is something that has been also recognized in the conclusions which came as a result of the May meeting. In these conclusions, of course, the pandemic was emphasized as an important element, but overall crisis management was uh, expressed as a, a critical point in which Europe should um, turn in future when it comes to cultural heritage 
to include crisis management policy of, of cultural heritage in the overall crisis management policy, not to leave it aside. Uh, besides that, to, um, to actually recognize and share information of the existing expert networks, which is something that I suppose also uh, uh, speaks to people in this room. Uh, also to enhance the role of recording and documentation, which is not necessarily a role, but we do somehow um, might participate in, in these, some of these efforts. Uh, use of digital technology, of course, in connection to that, and also uh, other ways of using technology, such as, such as technology, satellite technology to recognize where the problems occur. One of the very important things which I noticed in this conclusion is in, in point 32, in which they invite, uh, so the, com, uh, the um, presidency invites the commission to consider, I quote, producing an EU handbook on risk management in the area of cultural heritage in particular. I think that that's a, that's a very interesting in a way, uh, uh, a very interesting um, proposal, uh, which might be very much addressed to all of us if we uh, if we uh, could uh, try to shape the future of cultural heritage in in Europe in that sense. Um, I also thought that it would be interesting to mention that uh, due to the uh, the crisis that we all experienced in the past month, months, uh, conclusions which uh, the, the presidency got is uh, uh, cultural heritage is one of the very, very important area which was stressed. It was one area next to the media literacy. The two of them were the main conclusions of the May meeting. Um, we see that countries are, of Europe are very well aware of the value of their cultural heritage and the need to invest further, uh, which has also been uh, reflected, as Francesca said, in the budget which is created for the forthcoming seven years or five years. So it is um, uh, something that um, cherishing cultural protection offer and exchange seems to stay in focus despite the COVID. So, but we also have to talk about it openly and in many places as possible to actually make sure that it does stay in the focus of, of uh, everyone. Um, the question that was also um, uh, worrying me is what has, for example, I wanted to find out what are the developments, for example, in Croatia during the past six months in the area of cultural heritage. And unfortunately, I was promised some data from the Ministry of Culture, but it didn't um, reach me in time uh, to include it in this presentation. I suppose they're very busy with other other matters right now, so they might have uh, uh, delayed a bit uh, the sharing of information on this part. But I, I tried to do an in, um, some sort of um, independent independent uh, research, and I found out that uh, this even at the times of of the lockdown things were moving on so for example we have uh, had the protection of uh, of uh, intangible cultural heritage before the ministry of Ag agriculture which took force in may 2020 for uh, for the uh, for the recipe and making of zagorski strukli uh, and it was also included in the um, World Tourist Organization promotional material as uh, something that Croatia uh, was uh, to be recognized by. Uh, I also have to say that 
um, I, uh, that very important media attention uh, was given to the research of the uh, um, wreck of the Galliana Gross, uh, uh, Grossa, uh, a sh vessel which was owned by the Dubrovnik family Galliano, which was from the um, 1583 when it was sunk uh, in the in the Croatian uh, seas. But um, in the 60s, it was discovered and for a couple of years researched. However, then all has been nearly forgotten until reopened 2012 uh, when it was financed by the Ministry of Culture, by UNESCO and other fi finding uh, sources. Uh, and it resumes until today and it was um, this summer actually it was very intensive with the support of many private uh, supporters who donated funds from example from Germany, Austria, and so on. Italy was participating in previous years, France, United States, and so on. So the, the, it is the very, very important. It is said to be one of the most uh, best preserved Renaissance vessels. But the problem is that it's 30 meters below, uh, below the sea level. So it is actually quite costly to, to uh, research. And they are planning to open a museum specifically dedicated to what they found there, which is more than 20,000 objects so far, but it wasn't, it's not nearly half of the, um, of the, of the things that are still underwater. So that uh, makes uh, me believe that uh, there are uh, on many levels, um, on level, uh, this is also, of course, all uh, on, in tw 2012 and now all uh, initiated by scientific research. It is the scientific, uh, the, the, one of uh, the creation's most famous uh, scientists in the field who uh, actually reopened the research on the site. Uh, so that makes me believe that scientists do have an enormous role in, in preserving cultural heritage and making it uh, visible to people and making it um, uh, uh, open to everyone. Uh, and uh, on, on our side, of, on the legal side, of course, it's not the same thing. We can come as a support, uh, as a... As a channel building uh, uh, actors and so on but uh, it is it is definitely proving that cooperation in terms of diplomacy cooperation in terms of scientific research uh, generates the results that we all want to see in the end that is the preserved cultural Heritage. So I'm actually very, uh, very delighted to uh, end this presentation uh, in, in this um, optimistic way. Uh, I'll put it because uh, I see that uh, despite many challenges we've been faced, uh, enthusiasm on the part of people who are interested in cultural heritage has not decreased. On the contrary, People have been exposed to many digital, uh, many digital uh, sources, many more than before the crisis. That can actually turn out on a longer run to be a, a good effect, a silver lining to this cloud. And um, I'm sure that um, the, uh, the collaboration with all of you uh, will be even more than just a silver lining. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ivana. And now I would like to invite uh, Sloboda Midorovic from, from the University of Novi Sad, uh, uh, Serbia. Uh, uh, Sloboda is barrister researcher in uh, private law. Uh, Sloboda teaches general, uh, general civil law and property law. She holds a LM from uh, Karl Francis University of Graz. Um, and specializes in private aspect, aspects of uh, heritage protection. And Sloboda also uh, contributed to, as a national expert to the HIRAD project. So Sloboda, welcome. 
Thank you very much, Professor Jakubowski. Hello, everybody. First of all, I would like to thank you, Professor Fiorentini, for taking me on the board uh, of this uh, wonderful team. My thanks go also to my dear colleagues for their inspiring presentations. I must admit that I'm honored to be here today with you and to be given the opportunity to share with the audience, uh, to give the audience an insight into Serbian uh, regulation in the field of cultural heritage. Before I start with my presentation, I would just like to draw the attention of the audience that my home city, Novi Sad, was the first city of, of the European Union that was elected uh, for the European capital of culture. Initially, it should have uh, taken this title during the 2021. However, due to the circumstances caused by COVID-19, the European Commission has proposed the postponement of this title for the 2022. Therefore, I invite all of you to visit and enjoy Novi Sad during 2022. Well, before I go into details, I would just like to give you a brief overview of what points uh, I wanted to discuss during my presentation. First of all, I would just like to draw uh, attention to the major applicable legal instruments in Serbia in the field of cultural property law. Afterwards, I would like to move to some major regulative deficiencies, which I see as the space for the science to propose uh, to the national legislator certain modifications. Uh, given that uh, Serbia is a uh, European Union uh, ca a candidate uh, country, I would also like to single out what steps Serbia should take in order to harmonize its uh, national legislation with that of EU acquis. And uh, at the end, I would like to mention one example of uh, sound and good regional uh, cooperation in the field of restitution. So to begin with, uh, major legal sources or instruments uh, in the field of uh, cultural property law in Serbia. Our constitution from 2006 uh, devotes uh, sufficient attention to the cultural heritage and its preservance. So it uh, uh, introduces the duty for everyone to preserve cultural heritage. It also declares that cultural objects should be considered as uh, goods of national interest and protected as such. It also proclaims the freedom of artistic creativity and uh, it also confers uh, cultural rights to the national minorities in terms of their self-governments, in terms of their freedom to establish cultural institutions and express their cultural specificity. Uh, besides constitution, the major legal act that in detail governs this field of law is Cultural Property Act from 1994. Uh, it is a rather old act. Uh, since its enactment, it has been modified three times. However, neither of the changes was aimed at um, harmonizing uh, Serbian uh, law with the standards that meanwhile have become a commonplace uh, at the international and supranational level. This Cultural Property Act differentiates between uh, uh, two, two types and the three categories of cultural property. However, it regulates only tangible cultural uh, property. It uh, neither mentions nor defines uh, uh, any uh, examples of intangible cultural heritage. However, this does not mean that Serbia has not dedicated sufficient attention to this field of cultural heritage. Namely, as a contract in party to the UNESCO Convention for Safeguarding of Intangible Cultural Heritage, it uh, uh, dedicated uh, attention to inscriptions, uh, to the protection and descriptions uh, of uh, some examples of intangible cultural heritage in the UNESCO representative list. For example, it, in 2014, Serbia made in inscribing the celebration of the family patron saint in Serbia called Slava. Then in 2017, it uh, succeeded in inscribing uh, uh, Kolo, which uh, is a traditional folk dance. Uh, you can see it uh, on the photo. Uh, it is really a symbol of our national identity and there is uh, no gathering uh, that can uh, end out without uh, performing this traditional dance. Then in uh, 2018, it inscribed uh, the singing accompanied by the traditional instrument uh, called Muslim. Uh, regarding international plane, uh, Serbia uh, has ratified numerous of international conventions. Uh, those uh, 
enacted uh, under the auspices of UNESCO, as well as those enacted under the auspices of the Council of Europe. However, uh, it has not yet ratified 1995 Unidraw Convention on Stolen uh, or Illicitly Imported Cultural Objects. Coming to the next point of major regulative deficiencies, I will mention only one of them as a proposal coming from the science to the national legislator, namely one of the major drawbacks in Serbian cultural property law presents the fact that Serbia does not have centralized and unified register of cultural property. It has only the centralized register for the immovable cultural property. However, movable cultural property, then property under prior protection have been neglected. Therefore, uh, our government should invest effort and time in establishing the such centralized register. For example, uh, Croatia could uh, be used as a good example uh, for our national legislator in doing that. Uh, such register should be publicly accessible via internet and it would uh, underpin uh, certainty in legal transactions over cultural property. Then one of the major uh, challenges uh, should propose or should present also the modification of the rules that pertain to the fines for those who disregard the duties and restrictions in terms of ownership entitlements uh, when it comes to the preservation of cultural objects. As all national legislators, Serbian legislator also introduces a plethora of different restrictions of ownership uh, uh, entitlements. However, for the disregard of these restrictions, ridiculously low fines have been uh, stipulated in the law to illustrate it. Uh, if uh, I would uh, be uh, an owner of a piece of art, and if I would disregard uh, the duties that uh, the law uh, provides, uh, I could be fined uh, only with a pecuniary fine ranging between 0 0.8 to 8 euros, which we will all agree cannot serve its purpose. Uh, one of the major obstacles present also the national stipulations that pertain to the exercise of the preemption right. Uh, as many countries, Serbian legislator uh, knows uh, for the preemption right when it comes to cultural property. However, uh, it does not clearly state who should be considered holder of this preemption right, because it states that it should be a cultural property institutions. However, there are many institutions, such institutions on the territory of the Republic of Serbia, so it is completely uh, unclear to whom uh, the seller should offer sales offer when he or she wants to uh, sell his cultural property. Coming to the next point, uh, which concerns uh, harmonization of Serbian uh, legislation with that uh, of the EU, I would just single out two of them. First of all, Serbia should uh, uh, introduce the list of national treasures. So far, such national list does not exist uh, in Serbia. Uh, it should uh, establish such list uh, given the Article 36 of the TF EU, which uh, exempts uh, uh, objects that have been placed on such lists from the general ban on restrictions and prohibitions of import, as, export and transit within the EU. And uh, this list should be introduced also uh, in order to pay the tribute to the Directive 2014-60, which uh, governs the return procedure for the unlawfully removed cultural objects. However, this directive applies only to the return procedures of cultural objects that have been classified or defined as national treasures. Uh, also, the restitution or the return procedure should be uh, revised uh, in Serbian national legislation. Namely, Serbian uh, legislator has not introduced any tailor-made uh, rules uh, with regard to the return of cultural property. This means that general rules on uh, return of uh, regular things uh, apply. Uh, in terms of that, uh, Serbia should uh, introduce uh, time limits for instituting such proceedings. This is important to mention, uh, given that now, at the moment, uh, actio re vindicatio in Serbia is not subject to any time limits. And of course, besides that, it should modify its rules on the good faith in terms of 
uh, what is its important uh, importance for the uh, acquisition of cultural property because uh, these standards on good faith, due care and attention have been modified at the international uh, EU level so far. However, Serbia has not uh, aligned its national legisl legislation with these novelties. And uh, in the end, I would just like to uh, to present one good example of uh, restitution in the regional context, context namely uh, it pertains to the restitution of cultural objects uh, that uh, have been taken from the territory of Croatia to Serbia during the war in 90s. Namely, during hostilities, uh, Serbs that fled their homes uh, from Croatia uh, also took uh, with them cultural objects in order to uh, protect them uh, from potential uh, destruction and damage. Uh, these uh, objects mainly concerned uh, religious relics such as uh, church archives, church books, icons, and uh, etc. Of course, uh, after the war was over, according to international treaties, Croatia requested the return of these cultural objects. In 2002, uh, the, after the democratic changes uh, uh, occurred uh, in Serbia, the atmosphere uh, was as such as to enable the uh, sign signing of the agreement between the two countries that governed uh, cooperation in cultural and educational matters. And based on this agreement, a mixed Serb operation commission uh, was uh, founded uh, and uh, the further commitments of both states have been uh, elaborated in a special protocol from the 2012. Uh, according to this protocol, uh, both sides undertook uh, specific commitments, whereas uh, Croatia undertook obligation to restore the damaged Orthodox churches and monasteries, Serbian side uh, committed itself to restore and conserve the cultural objects that should be returned. And so far, uh, from Serbia to Croatia, more than 29,800 pieces of cultural property have been returned. And this is a good example of uh, uh, a compromise uh, between the two countries. And uh, it proves that uh, success can be reached when uh, both sides are ready to make a compromise. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Sloboda, for, for this very rich uh, presentation of the Syrian, of the Syrian experience. And I think that from from the uh, uh, for the for uh, from the presentations already already given, it seems that it seems that. Uh, uh, heritage is a is a is a is a value. It's also an umbrella term that that goes beyond that goes beyond the um, le, um, let's say traditional vision. What what is culture? What is heritage? What is monumental monumental value? So so we see that heritage uh, it's uh, is to is today is today guys also in relation to education in relation to to diplomacy not only cultural diplomacy we see this example given by by Sloba the last one very also with a, with a very important international political context you know? so 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 uh, very very, inter very interesting so uh, and also looking looking at um, at um, different different areas of uh, of policy involved of the of the EU so going going beyond traditional cultural policy toward different like agriculture like education like uh, like also like or like like also like also uh, agricultural to an extent and so on and so forth, and so, forth. Uh, so so the term is used to cover many different issues and um, uh, and it's all sometimes also um, use the term the, the soft power of the union based on this on this uh, on this uh, com common but diverse perception what is uh, what is heritage for for the member state and the uh, and the um, associated state of the of the union and also just to uh, and also when we think also today uh, also francesca mentioned and also alicia the 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 the, the issue of funding the issue of uh, of horizon 2020 in, and when we look at it at this um, uh, this uh, uh, this scheme uh, heritage and research innovation is seen in through the in, in all three pillars you know, of this of this system so excellent science so also so research infrastructures very important very important on the way of accessing infrastructures 
to, to, to um, not only to preserve uh, or safeguard heritage or different cultural manifestations, but also to provide a better access uh, for public, for different stakeholders um, uh, within the union. In, uh, and also, also Mara Spodowska Kiri, uh, Kiri actions also very much linked to, to, to heritage. Also when you think about ERC grants, so European Research Council grants, some of them also deal with, with heritage. Industrial leadership again, so enabling industrial technologies. Uh, so also also today mentioned uh, by by Ivana in relation to to, uh, to excavations of underwater cultural heritage, uh, and also and also we think and societal challenges is very important how to use how to use uh, the heritage policy how to use different tools different not only based on the. Uh, on the on the action from the union, but also like a from button up by member states, by 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 the regions, uh, to to face different problems related to environmental harm, to to migration, to um, to also today with 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 COVID, and and finally, if we, if we, the, also then the, the the one aspect which was very much visible in these papers uh, is uh, is this cooperation with. Uh, with outside world of the of the union, so so with different organisations, so with uh, with UNESCO, if, uh, we saw we, we saw we saw different examples of this um, during during the talks, and also and also and also Council of Europe and and many others, and we've got now 20 minutes and and um, for for discussion, and and I would like to, I would like to start with a couple of questions. I th I think they were recurring during this uh, this uh, this. Um, uh, these, these talks. So first of all, um, is the use of new technologies in relation to the restitution of illicitly removed cultural property? Because this was, this is a big issue for the union, this is a big issue for member states, and uh, especially on the one hand is the issue of internal markets, so the movement of objects within the union, but also the uh, the, ent the entry to the, the um, of, of, of object to the, to the um, common custom area from, from outside. Uh, um, we've got a new regulation uh, dealing with, with, with this issue with also and both, both, uh, both systems for the internal market and from, from, from the protection of other states, other, other nations' heritage um, um, from, from entering illicitly the EU market. Uh, the issue of new technologies is, is really important, not only, in, uh, not only at the level of databases, but also of, uh, of, uh, um, for, uh, for lawyers you know, to presenting claims, uh, to, to organize all, the, all, the, all the, uh, the, the part of the proceedings via online. So if you would like to co comment on this. Just a comment related to these new mm. technologies and the fight against illicit yes, trafficking in yes. cultural heritage. There are a um, research platform now, and we have been, since a couple of days, invited, we as uh, Chair of Comparative Law, to be part of a big project financed by the EU Horizon 2020. Uh, the acronym is NETCHTER, and it uh, points at using space technologies in order to individuate uh, where illicit excavations find place, in order to stop them very soon before they can create damage to cultural heritage. This is really a, a frontier line of research and it's also a challenge for us as lawyers to participate in, in this project and to, to study the legal issues connected with this new approach to illicit trafficking. It's very interesting and I'm very proud that we will try to, to give you our, our contribution as lawyers to, to this new frontier of research. And 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 uh, this is this is this is a, a, a really important big, big, because 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 the new technologies, especially especially also uh, also for the providing providing the the, the provenance the, the the place from the place was taken are crucial. So from this regard, I would like to ask a question to Alicia Jagielska in relation the use the use of databases, the use of online catalogs, in relation to. Uh, to, to, the, to the evidence of uh, due diligence. It is the concept in, uh, in, uh, in private law that the, that the purchaser, um, so, the, so the buyer um, uh, acquired, purchased, bought uh, an object on the, um, on the market, uh, providing that, that he, she checked all the available 
uh, available documentation. So, Alicia, if you would like to, to comment on this, because I know that you, you dealt with the topic of due diligence for, for UNESCO. Alicia? There she is. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone, once more. Uh, well, uh, not only the databases, the cooperation between uh, organizations, I mean, world customs organizations or, uh, or uh, uh, border, uh, border uh, uh, <coughs> offices, uh, but also new technologies when it comes to blockchain. Blockchain is still uh, uh, developing when it comes to provenance, but definitely it plays a crucial, it will play a crucial role in uh, showing the track record of the object. Uh, I mean the chain of custody, chain of uh, ownership. So far we have, uh, uh, we have uh, databases uh, such as Interpol database of stolen works of art. We have ICOM Red List initiative. Uh, there is there is uh, WTO World Customs Organization uh, Archeo, uh, Archeo uh, platform and uh, United Nations uh, Sherlock platform. So there are, but some of them they are not uh, are not accessible for all, but only for uh, customs uh, and uh, countries represent representatives officials. However, uh, during the last. Uh, um, states uh, meeting uh, on uh, convention, UNESCO convention 1970, one of the uh, one of the lecturers said that the information uh, flies faster than the object that has been uh, stolen. So that it's all about the cooperation, connection, uh, connection, uh, connection between uh, between uh, uh, between countries, between uh, parties interested in uh, uh, fighting with illicit traffic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Because so, so it's, it's it's really crucial the quality the quality of this of this of the images the quality of information provided by this uh, by these new schemes that, uh, um, are crucial then to prove the and uh, to prove the provenance to prevent the origin of an object in question. So so not only important in the interstate negotiation but also for for us lawyers in the in the judicial proceedings this 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 the the quality and uh, and of this of this of these new systems are. Are important, and also, if you look, if you look in, within the, the the EU law itself, the use of these technologies is uh, is required from from the people on the market. So they they uh, they must prove that they uh, that they check that they use the databases, and also and also on the other hand, also when you think about uh, in, about these um, new technologies. Uh, and claims for the restitution is also very important the the way how these claim, claims are presented within the union so we've got the new schengen uh, schengen system schengen system the the new the new the new space within uh, within uh, uh, within this this online system of exchange of information uh, fully fully designed for for the cultural property issues and also if i made the other question i think that was 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 also very much very much discussed uh, and during these talks is the uh, is the whether there are any challenges related related to to uh, to the use of new technologies especially the the way how uh, how um, heritage is digitalized and uh, the, um, the and um, how the access is provided to the to the wider public? Are there any challenges? Also, uh, obviously, especially from 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 our discipline, from from legal studies, related to this new tool of providing access to to, to heritage. Do you have any any comments? There? I'm asking the the panelists and the and the and the audience. <laughs> May I? Yes. Yes. Who is responding uh, now? Uh, Alicia. Yeah, Alicia. Uh, Alicia. Uh, well, definitely, when it comes to, to new technologies, we uh, we are facing many uh, many risks. For example, uh, IP law risks, uh, ethical uh, ethical problems. So so far, in use uh, uh, of new technologies in digitization or uh, in uh, Recreating some uh, cultural uh, cultural property or cultural heritage uh, uh, objects, uh, 
um, the, the exchange of best practices or even uh, creating some of uh, principles, guidelines, so that uh, people who will, uh, use, uh, who will use new technologies in order to manage to, uh, uh, to safeguard cultural heritage uh, will, will get navigation. Thank you. Yes, sure. Um, so, so, and and also, and also, do you believe that um, that uh, that the way how um, how the objects are presented that that are not not all the different practices, different manifestations? Because because also, as you could see in this uh, in this policy, uh, the notion of heritage is very broad. So it's not not related obviously to 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 tangible manifestation, but this, uh, this, uh, this uh, digital heritage, the way how it's presented and the choice of object can create any problems, can create like a misuse of certain concept, misuse of certain practices, misuse of certain heritage, and also perhaps infringement of somebody's rights. What do you think about, about this? Well, if I may, I, I think that the, the, the selection of the object to be dig digitalized is very crucial and, and very risky also from a cultural point of view, much more than from a legal point of view, because you, you select some, something that then has, is easily remembered and seen and accessed to, and the rest which is not digitalized risks to get hidden and to stay covered and to be forgotten also. So this is a cultural choice. Who decides what mm. is digitalized and what is it not? And in terms, in terms of, for instance, of uh, uh, because, because, because always display in the museums, always we, in, Euro, in, Euro, in Europe, in Europe in particular, we are facing now a major deba debate on the question of uh, on the way of display of colonial art, of colonial art, of colonial, of colonial heritage, so so acquired during the the the, the colonial times, so uh, initiated like in in, uh, in media by by President Macron, by the by the famous report by uh, Sarsavoie, but also this discussion and very much also national policies are are going to be implemented in many countries around the around Europe. So so um, so. Uh, what do you think how, how these questions of misinterpretation of maybe of others' rights, maybe not, not only copyright, but also other like, like um, religious rights, or also, also the, the question of the nature to whom and, and what could be displayed? How, how could be addressed in the practice? Can, can the union help member states, help museums to, to overcome these difficulties that that all European countries will need to face in the next in the next in the next uh, maybe not difficulties but challenges not challenges the real problems mm -hmm. that these countries will need to, uh, will need to face in the next years. Mm -hmm. So, how how do you see the role of the of the EU? Perhaps I could uh, perhaps uh, comment a little bit on this question, which really intrigues me. Um, Besides intellectual property rights, which are individual, commercially oriented rights, they do have their, of course, cultural dimension, but um, I, I think that you raised really a, a, an important question of contextualizing the digital uh, presentation. What is the context in which it is presented? Uh, uh, so can it actually hurt feelings of certain groups of people or something like that. Uh, that is a very, very important, I suppose. Uh, but that it's not only a digital mm. question. It also relates to the actual world. However, in, in the digital context, it becomes accessible to many more people and, and that, that can actually bring, bring a lot of problems. So I was trying to think about these things before and I, I thought that Perhaps Europe needs a code of conduct for such mm. uh, for such new ways of, of presenting art, in which principle principles should be mentioned to which everybody should adhere. Some some kind of major values in this context, uh, trying to to avoid. Um, nationalizing religious etiquettes and, and so on, so that we have the art 
as it is open to the eyes of the viewer, not as much affected by the one who creates it. I mean, of course, artistically that makes sense, but if we leave aside other values, that could be perhaps the art that could, or, or cultural heritage, which could be observed uh, in different ways and, in, and more inviting to more people as well because sometimes context can make it, make people reject mm -hmm. uh, viewing the, the, the actual value. So, but I, I thought that some sort of a code of conduct in this sector could be, uh, so that, that came to my mind because I thought about commercial areas in which codes of conduct are in many places applied uh, where law can, cannot actually intervene into all these things because they're too fluid. But at this level of principles, I, I suppose we could try to have some recommendations, guidelines, codes, something. If I may just yes. add, supporting uh, Ivana's reflections and observations, it's clear that the law of the EU is determined by its competences. and. Uh, Having not uh, um, legislative competences in this sector and only coordination competences supporting the member states, what the EU can do to face, to help the states, the member states supporting and facing this global challenge is going on with so-called soft law, then standards, codes of conduct, these, these actions and financing. Because it's the only way to try to address in a global and coordinated manner these problems, which are not national problems. The problem is that legal competence is mainly national. So there is a, a gap between what we globally or regionally as the European Union can do, the competence, the legal competence we have, and the, the reality which uh, finds legal competences on cultures split between the member states. It's still a national matter. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. It is, it is uh, uh, this, this idea, this, uh, this idea of, uh, of, the new, of, of guidelines of code of conduct. It's, uh, it's, really, it's, really, it's really important, especially now if we think um, that in 2019 the, the European Parliament adopted um, a resolution on the ethical art market. You know, so, so, uh, so asking the Commission to take action to provide more ethical, so more standardized. So obviously <laughs> there is the issue of whether, what, uh, to, to what extent the, the, uh, the, um, the EU can legislate. So whether it's still the issue of, uh, of the market, of the internal market, whether there is possibility to legislate or it just, it just um, can, be, can be an instrument of soft law. But I think this is the, and I, I agree with you, with, with, Frances, with Francesca and Ivana, that I think it is the moment for the EU, to, uh, for the EU and for, for member states to, um, and also states of Western Balkans, the, from the um, Balkan neighborhood, from, from Eastern neighborhood, from, from, uh, from, uh, to, 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 to take action. Why? Because it is the moment, it is the moment when, uh, in which uh, uh, at the global level we are discussing uh, the notion of museums, for instance. So, uh, so, uh, so, so, this, uh, so the, 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 the notion that we know from, the, uh, from, uh, from legal arts, from national legislation, from, from international legislation, the notion what is museum is going to be changed, is going to be changed. Uh, exactly in this direction. So, so what are the rules of participation? So the museum is not the place of, of collecting. Uh, uh, the museum is place of dialogue, of discussion. Uh, but obviously the key issue is so the new icon definition. So, so if you Google new icon definition, you will find the proposal for this new, for this new, for this new notion. Uh, so, so how to uh, how to open how to open the museums and also the methodologies, of, uh, as Ivana mentioned, you know, the methodologies how to involve, how to display, uh, and uh, and what are uh, what are the what is the ethics of displaying? Because obviously, with digital museums, uh, the, the um, exposition is much easier, it's much often, often much faster, but can be also more harmful for for different people, for the, for different communities. And the issue how to how to avoid or how to provide ethical way of of, of presenting, of, of providing access, 
I think it's crucial and it's a very good moment for the EU to, to take uh, to take step into this direction. So are there any any last questions for, for from the audience? Or comments? Comments, we've got one minute. <laughs> yes. Thanks. Yeah, just just, yeah. just wait you for have to go to the mic or the mic is coming to you. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> It's more a general question about the notion of cultural heritage and I was wondering what's the relationship between languages and cultural heritage? Oh, sorry. Um, are, they, are languages included uh, as is music or uh, agricultural manifacts and monuments in the notion of cultural heritage or it's something totally different from the, the even wide notion of heritage? Just that. Of course, there is a specific policy also covering languages and protection of minorities, but cultural heritage is uh, as wide as it also includes uh, uh, aspects uh, regarding uh, languages, of course, and this is very important, especially in the Western Balkan countries, where this particular attention to minorities and, and, and different communities living within the same uh, nation, uh, it's, it's always been, uh, has always been a, a, hot, a hot issue, yes. Languages are also part of the culture and, and they, they are also financed together with cultural heritage in some, in some lines of financing within the current programs and the current frameworks, yes. Uh, thank you so much, Francesca. I think we need to, we need to conclude because we are... Just a few seconds. <laughs> uh, it's our, our... And the session will disappear, I imagine. Y yes, yes. So, so thank you very much uh, for, uh, and, uh, for, uh, to, to organize it to, to, to the panelists and, and, and to the audience. Um, and and, and um, have, a good, have, a, have a good rest of the, of the Congress. Thank you. Thank you very much to all of you, especially who participated physically. And thank you for the technical assistance in this room. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you.